India's market news headquarters. Cutting edge analysis. Influential insights. Market moving intelligence. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswald Studios in Mumbai. Good morning, you're with us on Bazaar Morning Call. We're live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal studio. I'm Sonia Shinoy and joining me today are Nigel and Surbi. Guys, good morning. I mean, there's Hello. definitely some caution <laughs> in the system in the last couple of days. But let's see, we have two days before you get the exit poll results. Well, that's right. And big queues coming in over the weekend as well with the exit polls. You'll have, uh, you know, that OPEC meet and also you'll have the inflation data coming out of the United States. So action pack. I think on days like this when things look very, very gloomy, Maybe from the lows we see a bit of recovery. So let's see how that goes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just wonder, I mean, how traders have the nerves to get through periods like this. I mean, we have two trading sessions and then you get the exit polls and then you have the actual event outcome, which yeah. may or may not be the same as the exit polls. So yeah, I mean, hats off to all the traders <laughs> who plan to ride this through. And of course, we'll talk about the important cues as we start. You know, yesterday, Sudarshan Sukhani was telling us mm -hmm. that doing nothing is also a trade. Like, you know, <laughs> and when the market is so volatile, it yeah. sometimes helps to do nothing. But guys, what about that 50 degrees in Delhi? Ooh, really? Right? I mean, I don't think we've ever seen a situation like I, this before. I don't think so. You know, guys, I, I come from that place <laughs> and 46, 40, you know, 45, 46 used to be bad enough. It used to feel like you're burning, right? 50, I cannot even imagine. So, yeah, please take uh, plenty of care. All caution if you happen to be in the north. It's, it's really blistering it, it's out there. It's really bad. And I, I don't even want to know what happens in the next 15, 20 days in Mumbai as well, right? I mean, it feels already like 42, 43. So, guys, stay safe. Rains are coming. <laughs> Kerala starting the 1st of June and typically my calculations, historic calculations say 5 to 6 days. So, I'm gunning for about 5th <laughs> or 6th of June. Okay. We should be off. Here in Mumbai. Of the heat at least. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay, great. Well, let me tell you what you can watch out for today because it's going to be a long day of trade, lots to talk about. Now, there's definitely some caution in the system. So, if you've noticed what's happened in the last couple of days, the market has sort of come off from the highs that we saw a couple of days ago. In fact, from the peak, uh, the Nifty is now down about 400 odd points. I think there's a deeper gash in the bank Nifty, which is down almost 1200 points from the uh, May 27th high that we saw. So, you know, the market is definitely seeing some trepidation ahead of the exit polls. There was large selling by FIIs yesterday as well. About 5,840 crores were sold uh, by FIIs in the cash markets. And even in the US markets, there's been some moderate weakness, actually nothing alarming. Some amount of weakness is what we've seen. The Dow was down about 1%, but that as well is some amount of profit taking that we've seen in the US markets. Back home, uh, lots of stocks to talk about, so we'll get to that in a bit. There's also the Q4 GDP numbers that come out tomorrow, so there's some macro data to watch out for. From the heavyweights, this is the last leg of the earnings season, last few days. So you have Tata Steel that will be reacting to its numbers. Uh, the earnings were better than what the street was estimating. So I think that's something that the street will like. Bata was a soft quarter this time. The revenue growth was tepid. But I think the pick of the pack today definitely would be Cummins. A blockbuster set of numbers. Uh, revenues, EBITDA, higher than what the street was estimating. So the street will definitely like that. But in terms of earnings to watch out for today, there's Apollo Hospitals, there's Muthut Finance. So, uh, you know, plenty of stocks to look at in the broader markets as well. But largely, you'd have to say for the market, there is some caution in the system. And, uh, you know, some money is definitely being taken off the table. But I think it's par for the course. This is generally what happens ahead of uh, the exit poll outcome. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, the, I mean, the thing is that we anyway had our own situation to deal with. And that was enough to cause a lot of volatility. And now you have complications coming in from global markets because of what's happened overnight at, uh, on Wall Street. And it's not about one earnings here and there. And yes, I mean, those sales force numbers look really bad. And that stock tanked about 16% in after hours. So that's one part. The issue is the fall in, uh, you know, U.S. equities yesterday was triggered by the bond market. Look at the 10-year yield, and that's where the headlines are really coming in from, because the 10-year moved to 4.6% in overnight action, and it's staying there even now, uh, as I see the yield, 4.624, so there's no cool-off. So what triggered this rise? It was about seven basis points rise in the U.S. 10-year, and even the, you know, the other sort of notes, the two-year, etc., they were all moving higher. So what triggered it? There was a five-year note auction, and the demand was lower than anticipated, and lower than the average uh, for an auction typically of that size. And that kind of got people worried. In any case, we've had some hawkish commentary from the you know, federal officials this week. We have the uh, uh, PCE inflation data that comes out tomorrow. And all eyes on that because that is the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. 
uh, and not just this, the dollar also moved higher. So you've got the US 10 year surging to 4.6%. By the way, we started the year with hopes of those three rate cuts at 3.8%. And now the 10 year is at 4.6%. So the rise and the repricing of, uh, you know, rate cut expectations, that's been uh, you know, telling story so far in the first half of the year. The US dollar is back above 105. It's about a one month high on the dollar, about a one month high on the yield. And that seems to be complicating. Uh, the picture overseas. Now, uh, add to this, of course, issues over here, like, uh, you know, you guys have also been pointing out, Saturday evening is when we get the exit polls. So you have today and tomorrow to decide what positions you want to take ahead of that. And then, of course, uh, Monday is a reaction to exit polls and Tuesday is the, the real deal. So, uh, you know, plenty of volatility. And I was just looking at uh, the FIA positioning. So massive selling in the cash market. Thankfully, as usual, DIAs are offsetting it. They bought almost all of that sell, you know, uh, sell down. Uh, but uh, the interesting aspect also was while FIs, FIs have sold off quite a bit in cash yesterday, they are really building a positions in uh, index options. The net buying in index options was almost 7,300 uh, crores. And Nigel will tell us more about what's happening in, you know, in the options arena. But uh, yeah, as I say, I mean, strap up for, uh, you know, for a fair amount of volatility. But maybe because we've fallen for two days on trot, maybe the, the brave hearts come and you know, buy the dips. I don't know who those brave hearts are, but good luck to them. <laughs> well, that's right. You know, we've got a hands full actually today. Because today the global headwinds, as you all have been mentioning, well, they're against us. The dollar's a little bit stronger. The yields have moved up as well. And Brent crude prices as well hasn't really corrected any, uh, you know, big time overnight. Now, we've got the monthly expiry today. So brace yourself for volatility. All the futures contracts for the month will expire in today's session. But the Nifty Bank rollovers, well, they are relatively lower in trade uh, today. And just, you know, if someone is positioning for a comeback and the continuity of the current ruling government, which the entire market is, then in fact, maybe we could see a pre-exit poll rally. You know, so maybe that happens today, maybe that happens tomorrow as well. So I'll be interested to see what happens from the low point of the day. The Nifty Bank, you know, as I said, the rollovers are relatively low on D-1, that's getting into expiry day. Well, it's at 68%. On an average, we've seen that rollovers for the Nifty Bank is closer on 78%. So the positioning is relatively lighter on the Nifty Bank itself. What did the FIs do yesterday? Well, they lighted positions, both on the long as well as on the short side. But the key reason for seeing yesterday's fall, I think, was the amount of long unwinding that we saw in trade yesterday. And that's why now you have the long short ratio, which is even Stevens, added on 50% apiece. The PCR as well has come down to the lower end of the range. A few sessions ago, it was at around 1.3. That's come down to around 0.790 odd. Remember, normally bottoms out at around that 0.65 odd mark. So we've got some distance to go. But it appears the bears are getting very confident because we saw aggressive writing yesterday. 22,800 call, 22,700 call. Well, out there, you saw a big amount of open interest build up yesterday. 22,900 call as well did see a fair bit of build up. So between these two, there was close to around a crore shares that were added there. However, on the downside, you have the 22,750 put that's giving the bulls a glimmer of hope out there that maybe lower levels can de get defended. So let's get to the levels. The Nifty Bank, the reference point you have on the downside is around that uh, 20 DMA approximately. And then, in fact, you're looking at this uh, 50 DMA. So that 49,000, uh, 47,900 to around 48,300 becomes an important mark. But on the Nifty, going by the options data, which, uh, you know, we just uh, pulled up, you know, that's telling you that this should be the important support zone. You don't want this number to get violated uh, in today's trading session. That's crucial on the downside. While, uh, you know, otherwise you're looking at around that 50 DMA or thereabouts. Moving to the stocks that we're looking at, uh, at in today's trading session. Well, Tata Steel, that stock should open up in the green because those numbers look rather good. The European losses were lower. Can they move into the green? That's one key monitorable out there. So we'll keep an eye out on Tata Steel. And the other one is Cummins. Yesterday as well, we highlighted this uh, stock that maybe it was seeing a good amount of delivery-based buying. Ended in the green while the markets were under pressure yesterday. But those margins look very, very good. So both these two numbers look good. But both those two con calls are during market hours. So commentary will be tracked on both these two names. Okay, thanks a lot for that. So we'll watch out for these stocks very closely, right? Uh, let's uh, quickly get you some market opinion as well. Because the gift nifty is suggesting another weak start about 100 points lower. But on the equities front, we have Lawrence Belanco of CLSA who says that the snapback in the US 10-year yield back above its 50 DMA has created a, a headwind for global equities, leaving the majority of regional and global equities they track weekly remaining range bound. He says a break above the 4.7% mark in the US 10-year yield would add further downside pressure across these markets. Speaking specifically about the election outcome in India, Lawrence says looking at price action of the Nifty running into next week's election results, 
he sees that it has managed to break out of its narrow March to May trading range that formed between 21,700 and 21,735 and 22,768 and 22,800. He adds that from a pure pattern perspective, this breakout supports an upside target of 23,745 to 23,750. And he says that they recommend taking some profits into the 23,745 target area in anticipation of a broader consolidation slash correction taking shape in a similar fashion to the 2019 action. Okay, that was really a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, there is, uh, but the mood point is that there's some volatility that you can expect. Perhaps, right. Uh, that is the CLSA view as we are running into the event now. Let's move to some money market action as well and some news coming in here. On the rupee, Parul Mittal Sinha of Standard Chartered Bank says the USD INR has moved higher this week on dollar demand from importers and custody-related outflows. However, inflows related to MSCI rebalancing due on Friday should support uh, the USD INR pair this week. The market will, of course, closely watch the election outcome on the 4th of June for any further cues. For a larger moves in either direction, it is likely to be contained, though intervention by local banks. She expects the USD INR pair to trade in a range of 83 to 83.65 for the time being. Okay, and on the bonds, Parul says Indian government bond yields drifted lower last week on larger than expected RBI dividend, which raised expectations of a narrower fiscal deficit and revision of India's rating outlooks to positive by S&P, higher global rates and profit booking. However, partially offset some of these gains, the market will very closely watch the national election results on the 4th of June for future directions. She expects the benchmark 10-year bond yield to trade in a range of 6.95 to 7.05% in the very near term. Well, we've got a lot of stock-specific action track for you. We'll get to that in just a bit in our special top 10 segment. For the time being, we're running through the list. You have Tata Steel, Hero Motor Corp, Cummins, GMR Airports, Lemon Tree Hotels. All of them will be reacting to positive news flow. We also have RR Kabul. While on the flip side, you have four stocks that will be reacting to negative news flow. Bata, Alchem, IRP and Kaifen.